Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I want to keep this introduction short because I'm kind of doing another introduction thing similar to this in the main video. We're going to continue the Bridgerton dress today. As you guys know, it's been like four weeks, something like that, since I posted the first part of the dress where I hand embroidered the bodice that I made. And today we're actually going to finish the complete dress. And I actually went ahead and digitized the pattern for it and put it up on my Etsy store because so many of you guys actually asked me to digitize my patterns and to put them up. So here you go. I'm going to start with today's project and actually offer you my pattern on my store. And I'm going to continue or try to continue to do that with every following project that is my design. So obviously no remakes of designer dresses, garments, whatever are going to be on my Etsy store. I'll put a link down in the description below so you can go ahead and check that out. And I would love if you can send me pictures of your creations if you happen to use any of my patterns from my store over on my Instagram and make sure to follow me there. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's just jump right into the video. Okay, it's been four weeks? A month? I don't know how long it has been since I started this project, the Bridgerton dress project, and I made this bodice top piece. I'm gonna attempt to actually finish this dress. I have no idea where I left off. I don't know what that means. Probably that the thing is too small. I remember that I stopped in between cutting out a circle skirt because I didn't have enough fabric. I cut out some of the skirt. I cut out something the wrong way. That's what I remember too. But I have no idea how much I still need what I have and I don't know. So let's attempt to get ahead of that and continue cutting out the skirt to be able to finish this dress. So I have my sketchbook and I have some records of what I did. They are pretty confusing as they span over multiple sides and they include multiple corrections <laughs> and I guess I am doing half a circle skirt and then I made this mistake, you can see it right here, that I cut out the so apparently I have for the side seams, I remember now, I have back piece, side front, no, back piece, side front piece, front piece. And they all need different widths because of the side seams. They need to add up to the side seams. I don't know if that would have been so important as the side seams are literally covered up, but okay. And therefore I have four times eight centimeters width on one that is probably for the side pieces. I have two times 10 centimeters and two times 10.5 centimeters. So the 10 centimeter one is for the front. I cut them out already and I made a mistake in cutting them out because I divided them by two. It's highly confusing. I'm trying to get this and then I'm gonna come back to you. <laughs> okay, I understood. I get it what I did. So four times the eight centimeters is all for the back because the circle skirt is very, very large. It's very long. Therefore, the circle part is going to be very, very wide and it's not going to fit on the fabric. Therefore, I had to divide it by four. So it makes four different back pieces. So four times eight centimeters. Then the middle front is a whole other story. I basically divided it into three pieces, made a mistake. Therefore, I have four pieces and then I have two times the 10.5 centimeters for the front side pieces. And that makes a complete circle now. Are we doing a complete circle? Because this looks like a complete circle. I guess we're doing a complete circle. That's going to be a lot of hem and a lot of weight, a lot of skirt, a lot of weight. I don't know if that's going to work without straps. I'm going to try it. We're going to figure it out as we go. <laughs> so this is my piece, my I have one pattern piece for all the sizes and that is totally fine because I have different marks on my pattern piece. That means I can just simply fold it like this and it basically becomes a different pattern piece because that's the great thing about circle skirts. It's only about the circle up here. It doesn't change the complete other part of the circle. You basically just have to have your circumference up here that you calculated before, in this case, eight centimeters, 10 and 10.5 centimeters. You do the math for the lower part of your skirt as well. So it has to be in um, Verhältnis, im Verhältnis, 
I'll translate it right here. I don't remember. And then you can just draw a straight line down to the hem. So I already cut out 10 centimeters, all of it. I have one of the 10.5 centimeters. I need another one and then I need four of the eight centimeters. This doesn't seem so big. Look at that side. That is huge. So I have to figure out how and if I can cut it out of my fabric. So I figured it out. Only the back panels are missing, apparently. The 10.5 centimeter ones for the side front panel. There are two already cut out. So that's good. I basically bought way too much fabric then. Let's hope that I'm not going to come across any other surprises. <laughs> okay, let's cut this out and hope for the best. I have everything cut out. I hope that that's gonna be all. So that is my arrangement. I arranged it from uh, like middle front to all the way to the back. And now I can start sewing the side seams together basically. Make a whole skirt. This is gonna be heavy, really, really heavy. <laughs> and then I can attach the skirt to the bodice and I'll figure out what I do for the hem because I kind of wanted to put horsehair in the hem to make it even more puffy. But the whole thing is not gonna end up being a regency dress anymore. I mean, I set it up front that this is going to be a modern interpretation of an empire waist dress, so it's not going to be historically accurate, obviously, because I'm not schooled in that. But I don't think that I can call this Bridgerton dress anymore at all, even though those are also contemporary interpretations of the silhouette. But let's see where this goes. <laughs> It's the next morning and this is what we left off. I put the dress on the dress form, I pinned the skirt to the bodice and I found out that the measurements are completely off. That sometimes happens, especially if you have stuff on the bias, it just stretches out. And that's the case for a soccer skirt always because you have on the waistline, you always have some sort of uh, bias. So it always stretches out whatever you do. And that's fine. If you lay it down flat on your table, it's going to end up fitting, hopefully. But as my bodice has this sort of gap in the back, which I didn't change yet because of all the embroidery and stuff like that. And I'm surely not going to embroider anything on that. I'm, I think I'm actually going to end up doing a lace. So I'm just going to put two panels on both sides um, with grommets inside them so I can do a lace up. I think that would look really, really nice. And then I'm just gonna maybe continue it into the skirt or just put a zipper in there and just have basically the lacing as a decoration kind of thing in the back. You'll see what I'm gonna end up doing. I don't know yet, but that was just my thoughts on it. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is actually the hem. So I wanted to put horsehair in that. Obviously not real horsehair, but synthetic horsehair. It's basically a thing that you put in the hem and it stiffens the hem up. So it's gonna have really, really nice curves. I bought a bunch of this a month ago <laughs> because that's what I wanted to do for the dress and I have it. I hope that I have enough. I don't know how many meters I bought for this but the skirt is huge i hope that i ended up calculating it the right way if not i still have some synthetic lacing that i could potentially cut to the right length and hope for the best that i can make up for that if i have not enough this looks like plenty but you never know because you always underestimate a circle skirt <laughs> anyways i am going to add this to the hem i'm basically going to put this on the right side of the fabric, sew one centimeter over the hem, fold it onto the wrong side of the fabric, probably gonna top stitch it or under stitch it, and then top stitch it up here from the right side of the fabric. So the skirt is gonna end up having another seam approximately 10 centimeters higher than the hem, which is totally fine. I actually quite like that look. And that's what we're gonna do right now. And I do it right now because the skirt is already so heavy that I didn't want to add any other weight to it. So I'd rather finish the whole skirt now than later when also the bodice and the lining and stuff like that is attached. I'm not gonna line the skirt, but the bodice. So let's do that. I 
actually just realized that before I can hem the skirt, I have to search all of the seams because they're going to be fixed to the hem, obviously. So I'm really quickly going to do that quickly. Haha, <laughs> what a funny thing to say with a circle skirt that is 120 meters long, but I'm going to do that. <laughs> So I have the horse hair now fixed to my hem and I'm gonna understitch it so I'm just gonna basically fold it like this and then really closely to the edge to stitch on top of it. I'm top stitching it basically but I'm just fixing it to the horse hair because this is very like this wants to lay like this which is also fine. Should I do that maybe? Hmm. I think I'm gonna do this. Look at the puff. <laughs> I'm so happy. It looks exactly how I wanted it to look like. It's not completely done yet because the upper edge of the horse hair tape needs to be fixed to the skirt still. But look at that! The puff is unreal. And just imagine how that's gonna look like once it's completely fixed. If you have a wider hem that you can't really measure on your sewing machine because it's like 10 centimeters wide, like I do. So what I do with this is really, really easy. I go over to my sewing machine, measure, so I put my, my ruler right here under the machine so it stays put at 10 centimeters or 9 centimeters or whatever you do. And then you have here your corner, the edge, where your fabric is going to end. And what I do, I use some tape that is easily removable and just put it right there as a guide so that I can just move my fabric on the edge of my tape, which is 10 centimeters. And I always have 10 centimeters space between my sewing line and the hem. Please ignore the stains on my sweater. I just had something to eat and I might have spilled something on me. I am going to continue working on the dress and I'm actually going to work on the back panel. So basically this whole panel is not existent in my actual fabric yet, so I need to make up for that obviously. And as I said before, I was thinking about making a lacing in the back, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to measure how much this is and then basically make a pattern so that I have half of it here, half of it here grommets also i'm not sure if i should make this an actual lacing in the back or if i should make it fake fake would work if i can just take it off and like fix it into place with a zipper or whatever comes to mind and then underneath make another panel basically like two layers with a zipper i think that would be the better option because it's way easier to get into the dress if it has a zipper rather than lacing and it'll just add to the look which I think would be quite nice. So that's what I'm gonna do.
Okay, so I have all the pieces that I was talking about ready now. And before I can sew the pieces in, especially the fake lacing, I need to do the lining of the actual bodice. And I hope that I still have the pattern somewhere because otherwise that would be a huge problem. And as it has been sitting for a month under my table, stored away until I get to finish it, I'm not sure if I can still find my pattern in my chaos, but I'll try. <laughs> Well, that was easier than I thought. It was right there. And I still have the sample piece that I draped and then also the pattern right here. So that is really handy because I need the pattern to make a lining pattern out of. Another thing that I just realized before cutting out, thank God, I thought, of course, I have the fake lacing in place there, which is double-sided with my outer fabric. I don't need a lining that covers this piece. Well, haha, -ha, I have an under layer with the zipper. Of course, I'm gonna have to cover this part. So I need to actually add this part onto my lining in the center back so that it can accommodate for all of the space that I need to fill because I have a hole in my back. So that's what I'm gonna do really quickly. Now that I have my lining cut out, I'm gonna quickly sew it together. You don't need to serge any edges or anything because it's gonna be covered up completely. So I am going to do that. Okay, so the lining is finished. I also just did a small top stitch right here so that the seam allowance goes to the sides. That is just optional thing that I just did there because I like the look. So before I can actually um, sew the lining in, I have to turn over these two pieces. So these are my fake lacing back pieces. So I have some self-adhesive Velcro right here. I don't think that I necessarily need the self-adhesion part of it. I think I'm just gonna sew it in and I'm gonna quickly sew one side on to the bodice piece and then continue from there. So I think before continuing anything, I need to actually place some grommets in here and more or less finish the lace. I'm also gonna tidy up this edge, basically folding it to the inside and hand sewing the last bit close. So the first thing is done, now the next side. So it's the next day and I just finished placing all the grommets in my fake lacing. I'm going to sit down and quickly sew this shut by hand and then after that I have to think what I am doing next because yesterday I thought that the next step would just be putting the back with the zipper and everything, lining, whatever in, but actually I think it's time to make the sleeves because they need to fit be fixed somewhere under the arm hence I can't put the lining in yet because it needs to be sandwiched in between the lining and the outer bodice the sleeve and I guess that's what's gonna be up next but first I'm gonna hand sew this piece shut like that
So while hand sewing this shut, I totally forgot that I still need to attach some um, velcro on the wrong side, which I didn't do. So I could have sewn it with the machine had I done it before I closed the seam. I didn't do that, so that leaves me with having to hand sew this on there as well. Oh boy, this is not gonna be fun. But this, is this, does this stick enough to? Yeah, no, of course not. <laughs> My whole needle is sticky now and I, it's of course the good needle. It's not, it's not like a cheap shitty needle that I can just use and make it all gluey, but boy. What do I know? I'm just gonna do this like very roughly and I also found that if I only use like the very very last bit of the velcro it doesn't stick and you can just push it through so let's hope that that's gonna be enough to be fixed in place. My whole needle is full of glue. Do you see this? It just sticks to my finger. I hate this. I think that was the most unsatisfying hand sewing job I've ever done. So I got my sleeves cut out right here. What I wanted to do with the sleeves is, so it's gonna be like really puffy sleeves, right? But this fabric, I think, will not just stand on its own. Um, so I was thinking I'm gonna make like some sort of enclosure and just put some scrap material on the inside so that it is made to be puffed up. Of course, I'm gonna gather the shoulder part and the um, cuff part of the sleeve as well. I want to do the whole thing invisible basically, invisible stitches. So I will have to turn it over once I'm done sewing. Apart from that part that will be fixed to the bodice under the arm. So I just put the bodice on the dress form and now, hmm, how am I going to do this? That way I know how long I need the elastic to be because on that part where it is fixed to the bodice there won't be any elastic so you can see it's about six to seven centimeters wide and this part right here will not have any elastic whereas all of the other remaining part will have elastic all around it which is gonna end up being this wide so maybe I also need to measure that distance as well so that when the arm sits like this it's relaxed the elastic is relaxed basically 25 centimeters is the length of the elastic for the remaining part of the sleeve nothing in here and then sew this part to the bodice so i have this fairly strong elastic band right here which is seven millimeters thick and that's what I'm gonna use to make the puff of the sleeve.
Okay, so I put it on the bust right here and I'm actually gonna like put a little bit of scrap fabric in here just to see what it looks like. So I might want to resort to lightweight tool or something like that. another day and the last day for this project because it's already Friday and I have to shoot it tomorrow hopefully the weather is gonna be okay because at the moment it's kind of like raining snowing something in between anyways we left off with the dress having sleeves I actually went ahead and tried on the sleeves with and without tool inside of them and I think that it looks better without tool without any stuffing inside so that's what I'm gonna do I also finished the second sleeve right here and the next step will be attaching the sleeve to the bodice itself and then I can go ahead and line the piece and finally put the skirt on put the zipper in and it should be done Okay, the bodice is done thus far. I have to attach the lining now. And before I do that, I'm going to overlock the lower line of the lining, just to be sure that nothing frays because this material, it's like the lightest weight cotton ever. And I'm afraid that it's gonna fray. So I'm quickly gonna do that. And then I'm just gonna put right sides together on the top and sew along this line right here leaving the center back open because that's where the zipper is going to be.
Okay, it's finally time to put the skirt on. I have it over my hanger right here because the skirt is, I mean, and now it is time to attach this to the bodice. So the skirt is officially on and I think I'm just gonna put my labels in there, put the zipper in and then I'm done. And that's it with today's video. Of course, I'm not gonna just leave you without any videos of the dress actually being worn. So that's the next thing that I'm gonna show. I just wanted to point out that I do not have a lot, a lot of video footage because it was minus two degrees when we shot this at the castle here in my town and very windy and I was freezing. <laughs> so we had to do it rather quickly and I ended up not having a whole bunch of video. But of course, I'm still gonna show you what I have and I hope you enjoy it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell, leave a like as well as a comment. You can tell me down in the comments what you thought about this video because also that's just the second time that I basically made a vlog kind of video and a lot of you guys thought it was really nice. You can leave me your opinion down in the comments below as well as if you have suggestions for upcoming videos. I would love to hear from you too about that. Make sure to check out all my socials. They will be linked down below. It's the same handle on my YouTube as well as on all of my other socials like Instagram and TikTok. So go ahead and follow me there as I am posting a lot of behind the scenes footage, especially on my Instagram stories. And yeah, with that all out of the way, I'm going to say bye guys and enjoy the footage that we got from the castle.